Welcome to another video in our quantitative methods for business. In this video, we'll be solving linear programming problem using solver add-in in Excel. The problem has been formulated to save time, and we're more, really more interested in the setup of the problem in Excel and solving it using solver. So we have an investment problem here portfolio selection, they have several options to invest, these are the constraints that we're facing, and that's the objective function, of course, they want to maximize the total annual return based on their investment. So in order to do that, we're going to set up this table in Excel where we're going to place the decision variables as column, and this setup, we have five decision variables, you can modify it by deleting whatever columns you need to make it fit your actual problem if it's a three decision variable you can expand it to six or seven or ten or twenty decision variables and it's going to be the same problem or the same setup same idea as the constraints we're going to put them in the rows and here we have five constraints but you can add or remove any rows if you want to expand it for another problem that has more constraints the key thing here is the answer that Excel will going to give us is this blue area over here, which is R, E, A, P, and G. And this is where we're going to enter the coefficient of the objective function. And this is where we're going to have our objective function. The same idea with the constraints. We're going to enter the coefficient in this area here. And the right-hand side will be over here. And the left-hand side will be this formula that will also let Excel do it for us. So let's start by entering the coefficient of the objective function, which is the rate of return. So for R, it's 0 0.053, as it shows over here. So we're getting the values from the objective function. For Thomson Electric, 0 0.068, 0 0.049, 0 0.084, 0.118 okay now the objective function is basically multiplying the coefficient by the variable or the values that the Excel is going to give us so it's going to be this here cell times the value in R plus this value times the cell or the value in E and so on Instead of writing the formula ourselves, let's say B5 times B6 plus B C5 times C6 plus plus, we're going to use a function in Excel called sum product. The sum product function allows us to choose two range of values or more. So it says here array one, array two, array three. So we're going to choose coefficient, comma, the variable that Excel is going to solve. And the function, what it will do is it's going to take B5 multiplied by B6, the sum for it, add B C5 times C6, and so on. So it's going to multiply, it's going to find the sum of the product. So it's going to multiply the corresponding cells, then add them. Now it's going to give us zero because we don't have any values here. Excel will do the values for us. Let's start looking at the constraints. The same idea for the first one, the budget or the fund constraints, the coefficients are all one because there is no values and it's for all of them. So all of these should equal to 250,000 and this should be equal now the equality here or the sign we're going to enter here it's just for us in case we don't have this in front of us when we go to use solver we know what the signs are instead of going back to the problem similar to what we did here this would be what? 1 times whatever value we have here for R plus 1 times the value for E 
plus one times the value for f and so on. So we're going to use the same sum product function because it makes it easier for us. We're going to choose the first array, comma, and we're going to choose this array over here. Now, I'm going to repeat that for the other cells. I want to keep this fixed. So I want to use absolute reference. And from other videos, we know that to do that, I have to press F4. And you can see that now P5 to F5 are absolute reference. So if I copy this formula, it's just going to change the P8 of 8, but it's not going to change P5 to 5. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I don't have to type the formula again because it's going to be the same thing, the coefficient times these, whatever coefficient went to here. So for the second constraint, it's going to be only R plus G. So I'm going to go under R and type 1, and under G, type 1, which is just the coefficient. I don't need to enter 0 here. I can leave it empty. And just for me, the sign here will be greater than or equal. And the right-hand side is 50,000. The third constraint, coefficient of E is 1, A is 1, P is 1. And it's also greater than or equal. And... The value on the right side is 100,000. The fourth one, A minus 2P equals 0. So I'm going to come to A and put 1. And for P, I'm going to put minus 2. It has to be greater than or equal. And the right side is 0. Finally, the last constraints. Gold should be less than 125,000, so the coefficient of G only should be less than or equal 125,000. So now that we have set up the problem, and as you can see, the coefficient right-hand side matches what we have here. For, for other problems, you keep the sum product function as it shows over here, the only thing you need to change is the coefficient, the right-hand side, and the coefficient of the objective function. So now, in order for us to solve the problem using Excel, first we need to add the solver. The solver is an add-in in Excel that usually should be under the data ribbon. If it's not there, we have to go to File. Options, click on Add-ins, and click on Go. And you will see that it's over here, so you just have to check it. Click on OK. and it will appear over here. So now we're going to click on Solver and the first thing it's going to ask us is what is your objective? Set your objective. Our objective is this value over here which is the sum product which is the product of the coefficient times the variable then add them. Make sure you choose the right one, maximize or minimize. Our problem is maximization problem. We're maximizing the rate of return by changing variable cells. So Excel asks you which variables you want to change. We want to change these blue ones. Subject to it. These are the constraints that we have to add. So what we're going to do is, we're going to click on Add. And it's going to bring this window. We're going to select the cell reference first for the first one. See the equality here, we have to have to specify the sign. 
but it makes it easier by looking at this, assuming we don't have this text box over here. So the first one is equal, and the right side is this value. So we're saying G8 equal I8. The minute I click Add, it's going to be added to the constraints, as you will see in a second. Now, when you're setting up the problem, it's a good idea to put all the equal sign together, all the greater than together, all the less than together, one after the other. So when you add them, you don't have to add them Y by one. You can add them as a group or as a range. And this is what I'm going to do with the next three. So the cell reference, instead of selecting this cell, I'm going to select the range of these three cells by dragging or press and drag. All of them are greater than or equal. Then I'm going to select the corresponding range over here on the right hand side. So you see it's G9 to G11, I9 to I11. Click Add. Still have one constraint to add, which is the less than. If I have more than one less than, I can do the same. Select them using range. This is less than. And select the right-hand side. For the last one, I don't have to click Add. When I click OK, it adds it and it closes the window. So you click Add till you're done. And when you're done, you click OK. And you see that we have all the constraints, the less than, the equal, and all the greater than. The non-negativity over here, make sure you check this text check box, make all variables non-negative. This is very important. This is the non-negativity constraint. And just in case it was different, we're going to check the simplex LP, which is linear program. Once we're done with all of this, we can check different options, but we're not interested in these options right now, just to save time. We're just going to look at the solution. So click Solve. And you will see that Excel right away places the values here. And the rest is what we set up in the function. So let's just click OK. And you will see that the solution for this problem is to invest 125,000 in Thomson Electrical, 125 in Alberta Gold, 125,000 for a maximum rate of return of 23,250. And if you check, all the constraints are met or satisfied. Now, one of the other things that Excel, when I click, it gives me the answer report, which is basically what we have over there, the original value and the final value, all these values that it was given to us. And of course, the constraints, and that's part of the sensitivity report that we discuss in another video. Let's go back to Solver, and we're going to repeat the same thing. We're going to click Solve, but in addition to the answer report, I want the sensitivity report. Okay, so if you want the sensitivity report, just click OK. And you will see that Excel adds the sensitivity report over here. And that's part of the sensitivity analysis that we can do or the what if analysis. But we can check or look at the reduced cost, the shadow price, and the allowable increase and decrease as discussed in the sensitivity report video. So that's basically how we can set up and solve a problem in Excel using Solver. Thank you for watching and look for other videos on quantitative analysis and don't forget to subscribe.